I'm going to talk about the subject of iPhone idolatry. Many people have sacrificed their own kids to their idols. And some sacrifice everything they have. And this civilized life we live as Christians, we, we may not be sacrificing our kids to Moloch, but many Christians are committing iPhone idolatry by sacrificing other things like sacrificing time. Ephesians 5.16 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. And Colossians 4.5 says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. So time is precious. And I heard someone say, Do today what you will wish you did ten years from now. And if you read the Bible through only two times per year, in ten years you'll have read it twenty times. And the average person spends ninety minutes a day looking at their phone. At least that's what it says on the internet it's probably a lot more than that but if you spend an hour and a half reading your bible per day you could easily read it four times through in a year and having a smartphone isn't a sin i have one it only becomes a sin when you spend more time doing worthless things on the phone than you do in the things of god and you can get so wrapped up in the world and false gods that you will forget about the god who made you you can get so wrapped up in facebook and Instagram, and YouTube videos, and these games that you can get on the App Store, and forget about your Bible reading. Uh, Deuteronomy thirty-two seventeen and 18 says, They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not, of the rock that beget thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. So if all your time is spent on your phone doing nothing but Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Temple Run, Angry Birds, NBA 2K, Pinterest, then you're wasting precious time and you might have forgotten the God that formed you. And now you can redeem the time using an iPhone. Believe it or not, it can actually be very useful for study. There are numerous Bible apps. I have the eSword app on my phone. And I'd suggest getting it, but there are many free ones. Uh, I have the Final Fight Bible Radio app, and it plays real Christian music and real preaching 24 hours a day. Look up the Final Fight Bible Radio app on the App Store. Uh, they don't ask for money or play contemporary music. You can download commentaries on on the App Store probably for the for iBooks and read those. And Facebook can be a place where you share your, your studies and other material. And I'm not to the extreme of being completely against Facebook and things like that because you can't let the devil have everything. But we also should use them wisely. Get some apps on your phone that will help you spiritually. And this will help you not to sacrifice your time to an idol. In the Old Testament, when God talks about people and their idols, he says, they worship the work of men's hands. So number two, those who commit iPhone idolatry are worshiping the work of men's hands. In Isaiah 2.8, it says, their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. And the devices are something that sinful men have created with their fingers. While the Bible the Word of God is something God wrote with His fingers. If you look at Exodus thirty-one eighteen, it says, And He gave unto Moses, when He made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. And then in Revelation nine twenty, it said, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, that repented not of the work of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. While we look back at these stories and think, why were people so weird going to worship statues and things? People kind of do it today when they are in love with an iPhone that's gold and silver and all different colors. And they spend all their time doing that and that's all they think about. And the iPhone, a false god for many, is only a temporal item. The things made by man are temporal. Matthew six nineteen through 21 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, 
where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So some people's heart is on their material possessions, the work of men's hands, and these things can't save them at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Micah five thirteen through 15 says, Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands, and I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee. So will I destroy thy cities, and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Uh, I was watching videos of those people evacuating the wildfires in California, and some of them happened to have their phone out and recorded the whole thing. And that just reminded me of how it's going to be when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. People are going to be trying to get out of the fire, but the fire is just going to consume them. And they're going to turn into blackness. Uh, it's a scary thought. Uh, all that's going to matter one day is what you did with the Lord Jesus Christ. And people are going to look back when they're in hell and they're going to see all their time spent on an iPhone. They never took time out to think, who is the Lord Jesus Christ? Is the Lord Jesus Christ real? Is he my savior? And there will be a time when a lost person dies and is at the judgment one day and looks at his maker and his idol will not be able to save him. Isaiah seventeen seven through 8 says, At that day shall the man look to his maker. And his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. And he shall look not at the altars, the work of his hands. Neither shall respect that which his fingers have made, either the groves or the images. What's on the iPhone? Images. Moving images. All kinds of images. On Instagram, all you see is images. A lot of pornographic images. A lot of images that say dirty words on them. Uh, the iPhone is so inferior to the Bible. Uh, they break. They get stolen. You have to get insurance on it. Uh, or you can't get another one because they cost so much. The words of God, however, will stand even when the world is on fire. And if you have a Bible and read it, then you hold something in your hand that will benefit you for the rest of your life just for reading it. Uh, the iPhone, you have to charge it. You don't have to charge a King James Bible. It's always there. When, when you need it. You can pick it up any time. It never dies. In Revelation 11, it talks about every nation, kindred, and tongue seeing the bodies of the two witnesses lying in the street. In Revelation 11, 9, it says, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies, talking about the two witnesses. They shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And this is made possible through technology like a smartphone. Everyone has one. You notice even today, even during these wildfires that are going on, people still have time to pull out their iPhone and, and record this. And people all over the world are seeing it. And I believe the end times will be full of pictures and videos of the crazy things that will take place during that time period. Imagine the truth movement on YouTube and the footage they will have of all the supernatural stuff taking place. That is, if they go through the tribulation, if they're not saved and they miss the rapture, imagine the videos about people predicting who the Antichrist is. Only this time, it will really be the Antichrist. Imagine the, the videos and the footage people are going to have of the natural disasters and the, the, the locusts coming up out of the bottomless pit. And all the things that you're going to see during the time of Jacob's trouble. If you're here during that time and you get on the internet, look at YouTube. If that's going to be even possible during that time. But obviously it's going to be because people from every nation and kindred and tongue are going to see the two bodies of the two witnesses. But if you're in love with an iPhone to the point of idolatry, then you're worshiping something that you have to do maintenance on. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 5, it says, And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from 
Ebenezer unto Ashdod, when the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon, and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod rose early in the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord, and they took Dagon and set him in his place again. So you have to get a screen protector in case you drop it. Just like Dagon, it will shatter. Your phone will shatter. You have to get one of those glass screen protectors to put on it. You have to get an otter box case to put on it because the backs of them will shatter if you drop it. You have to get insurance on it. Uh, the Word of God isn't like this. It endures forever. And God preserves it from generation to generation. And I know you know this. I'm just giving you a reminder. When reading the Bible, you need to remember that it's alive. Uh, it, it talks back to you a lot better than Siri does. Siri can't even answer half your questions. She can't hardly understand you if you have a country accent or something. But another thing is, people who have excess use of iPhones will seek it for wisdom and instruction instead of the King James Bible. Isaiah 19.3 says, And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof. And they shall seek to the idols, and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. Just like it talks about here in Isaiah, people aren't getting the counsel of God, or the wisdom of God. They are seeking the wisdom of the world. And when they want to know something, they don't say, let's just see what the Bible says about this. They say, Okay, Google, or Hey, Siri, or they look on Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest or go to YouTube and type in how to do such and such or get advice from people on YouTube or something. And Siri can barely answer any questions you ask. And Google will hide some of the websites with the best truth. And the majority of websites and things on the iPhone are nothing but the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of the world is foolishness to god first chronicles 10 8 through 9 says and it came to pass on the morrow when the philistines came to strip the slain that they found saul and his sons fallen in mount geboa and when they had stripped him they took his head and his armor and sent him into the land of the philistines round about to carry tidings unto their idols notice that phrase to carry tidings unto their idols. If this happened today, they would pull out a f iPhone and take a selfie holding the head of Saul and carry tidings unto their iPhone idol by putting it on Facebook and Instagram with a really neat filter on top of it. Um, this was good news for the Philistines, so they decided to carry tidings to their idols, just like people do today. Uh, today, your news feed is full of other people's good news who did the same thing. And this is addictive to people because they are like the people in Athens. In Acts seventeen twenty one, it says, For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. And when you get a text you've been waiting for or see exciting things on your news feed, or you get likes and shares... It releases happy chemicals in your brain, and that's why it's so addictive. Uh, you're just waiting for that next like or that next notification to pop up on your screen. And it's crazy that the iPhone is how many people keep up with their human idols. They follow certain people on Twitter or Instagram. There's no spiritual benefit to it many times if you're using it the wrong way. And it is just to hear some new thing. And this replaces any time for God in the life of many Christians. 1 Kings twenty one twenty six says, And he did very abominably in following idols, according to all things as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Notice he's the phrase, following idols. And that's the phrase we use so commonly today. You're following someone on Twitter. You're following someone on Instagram. And sometimes the stuff you post on your Facebook app can ruin your testimony because it shows the abominable things you may be watching or doing. And if you get right with God later, many people still know about what you're doing when you were out of the will of God. And you need to watch out what you put on your wall, your Facebook wall. Isn't it strange they refer to it as their wall and they, they put images on it? 
Because look at Ezekiel 8 and verse 10. It says, So I went in. This is Ezekiel. So I went in and saw and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. So there's no new thing under the sun. They had crazy stuff on their walls just like you got crazy stuff on your walls maybe that you needed to lead off of there. Psalms 106.36 says, And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Many times the iPhones ruin marriages. Too much time spent on the phone and not enough time with each other. Spending too much time in meaningless things on the iPhone can make you lazy. It can become a snare. Uh, Psalms 106.37, Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. You'll end up spending all your time on the iPhone instead of training up your child in the way he should go. While you're on the phone, they're out doing who knows what. Psalms 106.38, And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. You can kill... You can kill the the life of your kid by spending too much time on your iPhone. He'll he'll have no guidance. He won't know right from wrong as good as he would if you trained him up in the way he should go. You you spent too much time for yourself and not enough time with him. And not only this, you can kill someone's testimony with an iPhone. Posting gossip and being a talebearer on your iPhone can kill another person's good name. Psalms 106.39, Thus were they defied with their own works, and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Spending more time on the iPhone than in the book will make God angry at a Christian. And now with all this being said, I'm not against having any type of smartphone, a laptop, or device, as long as a person doesn't let it consume their life and overtake their, their fellowship with God. The devices, as I said before, can be used for good. One thing they all have is a King James Bible app. And if you want to make your iPhone a place to to help you spiritually, then a good thing to do is get a Bible app. When you want to pull out your iPhone, do it and just read some chapters. There are audio Bible apps. Final Fight Bible Radio has a free app. It's a 24-7 King James Bible preaching and teaching with godly music. Uh, no money hungry Faith Healing Fakers, and No Music by Lecrae, or Mercy Me, or Third Day, or Casting Crowns, or Heal Song, or Amy Grant. Only Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs. And there are also tons of Bible-believing iBooks, as I said before, that you can purchase on the Bible Baptist Bookstore. Uh, you can use the iPhone for God. You can turn something bad into something good. But if you're not saved, the last thing you need to wor be worried about is getting over your iPhone addiction. The first thing you need to do is come to the Lord Jesus Christ and rely on Him and Him alone to be your Savior. Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and he says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He died for your sins. He died by shedding his blood. And he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And if you want to be saved, quit trusting in your own goodness to get you to heaven, and rely on the Lord Jesus Christ to get you to heaven. Place your faith in Him and His finished work on the cross to be your payment for your sins. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So if you want to be saved, simply come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on Him today.